So this video is going to be all about springs. We're going to be talking about Hooke's law and how springs work and yeah, how to use it. So let's look at this one here. First of all, I like this. I used to have winter fab, but now I have spring rolls. We're talking about springs. All right, so let's look at this. Hooke's law itself, well, it's relating to actually hanging mass on a spring. So you can imagine then here, I've got this actual spring here, and I've got a mass hanging from it. Now, if you just let it be by itself, it'll eventually just set its own equilibrium position. Right? So we're assuming it's not moving, because if it's moving back and forth, for example, that will be actually simple harmonic motion. But we're going to assume we're not doing SHM, as it's called. No, we're just going to be letting it hang there and sit happily. And now if we add more mass to the spring, well, then what happens? Does it make sense the spring will extend? You've experienced springs, hopefully, before. Maybe you haven't done this experiment, but hopefully you understand a little bit fundamentally how this works. The more stuff I add to the uh, spring, the more the spring is going to stretch out. So let's now start being a little bit more formal with what I mean by stuff and stretch and all these terms here. So first of all, there is a downwards force acting on this mass. And remember what that force is related to? Well, it's what we call F. Sometimes we write with a little subscript G but it's equal to m times g, right? That's the mass times the um, acceleration due to gravity on Earth, at least. This is how it'll work. So it's just going to be mg going down. Now, we've got these forces that are acting on the spring. If it makes sense, and there's a downwards force acting on a spring. And if it is in equilibrium, that means the spring must be creating or you know giving this upwards force. So that's why this force on the spring I'm going to put a little vector sign on that because force is a vector. So is displacement. Now, what are the units? Well, the units of force are newtons. I hope you knew that one. Displacement from equilibrium, that is in meters. So we'll write that down. What about the spring constant? Well, let's first write down, now finally, we're ready. Da, 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 we're ready for Hooke's law. And it just goes like this. F equals minus kx. That is it. And this is on your data booklet, so you don't have to memorize it, which is nice. But this is how it works. And again, if I wanted my vector symbols, I'd put it there, and I'd put it there. There's a couple important things to notice, first of all. We could say, then, that the force is going to be directly proportional to the displacement, right? just by some constant. And that's actually what we use as our spring constant. Well, now we can actually do the units of it. What are the units of k? Well, imagine... To get to the units of k, maybe you have to get k by itself, why not just be f over x? I mean, ignore the minus. But uh, so f won't be, uh, sorry, won't k be f over x? Right? If I want to get rid of the x, I divide. So that means the units then must be newtons per meter. So that's going to be the units here. So we're going to say newtons, and then we're going to say meters to the minus 1. And there we go. So that's newtons per meter. So that's really key here, is that we've got these quantities here, but it's really f equals kx. Now, a few important little things here. The minus sign here. This one right here, that's to denote the fact that the restoring force, this force that this spring is acting on the um, mass, it is opposite to the extension, which means if you stretch it downwards, then the force will be upwards and so on. And if you stretched it, you know, if you compressed it, I suppose, then the force would be down. But a pro tip is, as far as we're concerned in equations and working with it, you can pretty much ignore the minus sign. The minus sign is just to tell you that it's an opposite direction. Otherwise, we can just keep going. So let's do a real example here. I like this. And here, finally, spring is just around the corner. You can't think of spring around it. I think it's cute. So we have a mass. It's attached to a spring, just like we said, with a spring constant, k. Now, you measure the force on the spring. So you already know that uh, f equals mg here. And we're going to assume this is a vector here. And the displacement of the spring is going to be this vector here. Now the question is, what's the spring constant? Now this one might look really hard because what? I'm given a graph. What am I supposed to do with this? Well, we've got force and we've got extension, right? We've got our basically our displacement here. So what do we do with this? This might not be simple. So I want to give you a trick here. So this is actually a really important skill that we use in physics. And I'm going to call it linearizing. Okay, so I'm going to call this linearize. Now, what do I mean by that? And by the way, I'm going to spell it with an S because that's how we do it in Canada and the UK. If you're American, you write it with a Z or a Z, but I'm going to say linearize. What do I mean by this? This may seem really random right now, what I'm about to do, but it's going to be really, really important. Do you remember the equation for a straight line? The equation for a straight line is this, right? Equation for 
linear function. So something that is linear, a straight line graph. What is the equation for a linear uh, function? Well, actually, I'll say linear graph. Not really function, I don't really care about function notation in this case. So what is the equation of a linear graph? Well, I hope you remember this. It goes, and hopefully everybody knows this, it goes y equals mx plus c. Sometimes people use a b, doesn't matter. But the key thing to notice is what is m and what is c? So m is the gradient or the slope, some people like to call it. That's the gradient, okay? And c is the y-intercept. Now, why, haha, is this important? Well, let me show you. This is actually a really important key skill here. So intercept, there we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look at this equation for Hooke's Law now. So what was Hooke's Law again? Hopefully you remember it. Otherwise, I can just go back to my notes at least. But Hooke's Law, remember, it went f equals kx. Remember, I'm going to ignore the minus sign. Okay, so it's Yes, the minus is kind of there, but I'm going to just ignore it. Now let's look at that, how it compares to this. So if you look here, let's do this like this. So f, that's like the y value. m is going to be this number in front of the x. x is going to be just x. And then we have a you know, plus 0, basically. So there's the y-intercept is 0. So does it make sense then that something that follows Hooke's law should be a linear function if we graph y is f, and x is the, well, x in this case. So that means then k must be the gradient. And by the way, it should have a y-intercept of 0, and it does. So this is the key thing right here, okay, is that k, this is the really key part. It wasn't obvious. That's why I wanted to explain it like this and say, look, if ever you're not sure what to do with the graph, very often something like this linearizing is important, at least if it looks like it's a linear graph. This is the key trick to solving. So what does that mean for us here? Well, that means then I can say that k is just going to be the gradient of this graph. Well, okay, that means to do a gradient, I'm going to need to pick some points on this. So maybe I'll pick 0, 0, sure. And I'm going to look for somewhere where it matches up nicely. And I think it looks like this right here matches this right here. So in other words, I've got 3 and 1.5. Now, I know that it goes from 0 to 3. I mean, I could write it like this and say, all right, then it's going to be 3 minus 0, technically, over. Um, and it's going to be um, 1.5 minus 0. OK, so that means um, I would just say that k, then, is equal to, in this case right here, well, 3 over 1.5. And we're done, right? Wrong. I have on purpose made a mistake. I did this on purpose. So yes, I'm being a big jerk here. Why did I do this right here? Watch out for units. Can you see what my mistake was? There's something weird about the units. Look carefully here. This is really, really common on exams. We've got centimeters, don't we? Those aren't meters. So that's why if I really want to do it, then I have to say, ah, watch out then. Because of that, I can say then that k equals, it's going to be 3 over 0. 0.015 because this is supposed to be 1.5 centimeters. This is 0 0.015 meters. That's really important. Okay, that was meters and these were newtons. So, okay, that was really important. Well, then I can just open up my trusty calculator and see about that. So, what is 3 divided by 0 0.015? Oh, it's 200. All right, so then I have k equals 200. And I'm going to say, what are the units again? Oh, yeah, meters, uh, sorry, newtons per meter, because I fixed it, right? So it's newton meter to the minus one. So I thought this was not trivial. There's a few things about this question that made it, you know, a challenge. I think, first of all, it was that we had to know somehow, just from the equation, that the gradient of this graph is going to be this spring constant. It wasn't obvious. That's why I think linearizing is a really important skill. Okay, So I use this quite often actually on exams. And just be careful for units. Those are really important. So can you see in this video, we've gone over Hooke's Law and how to use it.